Every year I love to do this video where I read your favourite books of the year and it's time. <laughs> Listen, you pick up a lot of books that I love and the logic would go if you're watching me then <laughs> we have similar reading days and I should pick up the books that you love. So I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but I've connected them. So I asked on Instagram and my YouTube community page what your favourite books of the year have been and I'm going to read the ones that the most of you said. Last year wasn't the worst but it wasn't the greatest. I don't think I had a five star from this video when I did it last year. I had a one DNF and I feel like a couple four stars and maybe one three star. We're hoping for better this year. <laughs> but yeah I'm gonna put my fate in your hands, my reading fate, <laughs> and let's go see what your favourite books of the year had been. Okay so what I do when I do this video is I ask you guys on Instagram and YouTube community page what your favourite book of the year has been and then I go through and I make a spreadsheet and I write down every single book mentioned. Every single book mentioned. It takes me hours. Probably I spent like six hours <laughs> doing this. I've been working on this for five weeks. I don't have better things to do with my time. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> This is in the pursuit of science. But before we get into the books I'm gonna be reading, I thought let's chat through the books that were really popular that I'm not gonna be reading. Now, most of these are books I've already read, but the most popular book that I am not gonna be reading in this vlog, and really should be, is a book I haven't read. This isn't the most popular book. The, what, what, the most popular book, with 13, is one I'm gonna be reading. This had 12 people say it was a favorite book of the year, but I'm not gonna be reading it. And it's the last time to die by Rich Rossman, because I'm reading this like next week. <laughs> when I do my Goodreads Mystery Thriller Awards top 10 vlog, which I'm very excited for, I hope you are too. So I had to save that for that vlog. I couldn't read it in this one, okay? But 12 of you did say it was your favorite book of the year, which like, I couldn't mean it would be well, and then I could read it well, so I'm gonna say. Then in terms of other books that I have read that a lot of you said, we have Babel by Arif Kwong, which was the most mentioned book last year. 11 of you said this this year. We have Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which was in the vlog last year, which 11 of you also said. And then with seven, we have Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. And with six, we have Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. So I just want to say we have three five stars out of this four and a four star for Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Now that should bode well, right? Your most favorite books of the year, four of them, out of four of them, I've given three five stars but it was the same last year and then you didn't give me a fucking five star in the vlog, so like. <laughs> I just I'm feel so, sorry. so deceived. I know, but like, like honestly, we're I just in feel this. So we're all deceived. deceived. But let's talk about the books that I am gonna be reading. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for all of these. These all sound really good and I'm very, I'm very excited. So the most popular book this year, the book that most of you said was your favorite book of the year with 13 of you, is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I'm very excited to give this a go. So for those of you who don't know, I have read A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I think I gave that a 3.5. I did enjoy it. There were aspects of, of it I thought could be better, but I thought it was a very unique book. And I know lots of people have been loving this one. I know a lot of people don't like this cover, but I love this cover. I hate the US one with like the typewriter letters. I hate it. I think it's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. And for those people who think this one's ugly, I love it. And this is about some journalists and a war with gods and it's a romance between them that's what I really know but I'm excited to give it a go I've been very intrigued by this one yes it's YA and I haven't had the best luck with YA in past years but I don't know I'm really excited to give this one a go then the other two that I'm gonna mention seven of you said they were your favorite books of the year first we have Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. Now, I've only ever read Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I've never read a Cosmere. And I know this is one of his secret projects that he like crowdfunded through Kickstarter. I don't really know what it's about. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> it's about Tress of the Emerald Sea. I'm not, I don't really wanna know anything going into this. I wanna go into it blind, okay? You guys have put these books on my lap that I probably, I mean, Divine Rivals I was interested in, but these other two I probably wouldn't have picked up if it wasn't for this video. So I'm putting my fate completely in your hands. Um, Yeah, I don't know what it's about. <laughs> I'm excited to try more Brandon Sanderson. I'm, I'm excited to try his fantasy because like I said, I've never read anything in the Cosmere and I think that's probably where you should go with him. Like I did not love Skyward. Um, my dad loves Brandon Sanderson. He has all his books next door in the library room. That's there. <laughs> so I'm excited to give this one a go. And then a final book that we're gonna be reading that seven of you also said, there was another book that I'm not gonna tell you about that seven people also said, but I'm reading it next year for a video that'll start in January. So we're not reading it in this vlog. So the only other books that seven of you said 
I had never heard of. I have since heard people talking about it, but when I was doing this spreadsheet, I was doing it in like no, um, October time. When I was making the spreadsheet, I'd never heard of this book and loads of you are mentioning it. I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Whereas Divine Rivals, I was interested in reading. I'd heard of Trusty Emerald Sea. I wasn't particularly interested in reading it. This I'd never heard of. And it is The Will of the Many by James Islington. Seven of you said this one. Again, I don't really know what it's about. It's about an elite academy, um, which maybe is like spies. I don't know, there's a map. <laughs> Again, I'm gonna go into this not really knowing anything, but guys, why are you doing this to me? How long is this? Let's consult, let's consult. Over 600 pages, absolutely not. You guys, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> you are rotten to the core. Call the police. Why can't we have a little, little short book? Do you think that Psalm for the Wild Bill, which I know is on a valley, got six. Why couldn't just one more of you fuckers said that one, honestly? <laughs> The audiobook for this is 28 hours long. I don't, I, I don't think I've read a book this long this year. This is gonna be the longest book I've read this year. And I'm probably gonna have to read it in like two days because I've got a lot of books to read at the end of the year. So I'm trusting you that it's gonna be worth it. I'm excited to give it a go, but I really, I don't know anything about it. I'm gonna go into this one blind as well. So those are the three books that we're gonna be reading in this vlog. I think I'm gonna read them, but I'm gonna start with Divine Rivals because that was the most popular one. And then we'll just see how it goes. But I'm really excited. We're reading all fantasy for this vlog, which is interesting. It wasn't all fantasy last time. We had a horror, we had a, a couple contemporaries and one fantasy. But all of your favorite books are fantasy this year, or the most popular books, which is interesting. We all need to escape the world at the moment, obviously. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with Divine Rivals and I'll check in with you when I'm a little bit of the way through. Hello friends, <laughs> as you can see there's empty shelves here, that's because let me show you all of my books, can you see that? What can you see? Hang on, let me look in the viewfinder. All of my books are on my bed. <laughs> oh god, I just filmed the video where it's like all of my um, all of my unread books, <laughs> all the books on my TV and I've got to put them away. <laughs> And I really scratch my head and I wonder, where's God when you need him? <laughs> Anyways, let's talk the reading vlog, shall we? So, <laughs> I'm just looking at them and I just want to cry. <laughs> oh, God. I have to, like, figure out where they go. This car is, like, two steps away from breaking. I'm halfway through Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross and I have thoughts. So, vague synopsis of this. It's set in, like, a vaguely fantastical world but it feels a bit world war ii but if there were gods leading the war basically like that kind of time frame like everyone's writing on typewriters kind of thing and we've got these two journalists who um hang on what's not a spoiler <laughs> two journalists who are competing for the same role at a newspaper as columnist one iris her brother has recently gone away to fight in the war for one of the gods or the goddess who's fighting in the war and she lives in very much like poverty difficult conditions and our other dude, he's a rich ass boy. What's his name again? Roman. But what's actually happening is they are writing letters to one another. So Iris doesn't know it's Roman, but Roman knows it's Iris. And they've got these, actually no, I won't tell you <laughs> how it happens, but basically they're writing letters that magically get sent to one another um, and confiding in one another. So they hate each other at the job because they're competing, but the letters are like, you know. <laughs> Firstly, I love that they're journalists because as a girl who studied journalism at uni and was gonna go into journalism <laughs> instead is fucking on the internet talking about books. <laughs> I just, I really enjoy that setting. I think it's a very interesting setting. I get a lot of the journalism lingo and like, I don't know, I think it's a cool setting, especially something with a bit of like an older time zone when it's all like, you know, like you can hear the typewriters clacking and like, you know, it just feels a bit like, Mm, there's a, there's, an, uh, there's a, a certain je ne sais quoi to like an older journalist newspaper office. And I do think there's something about this book that feels nostalgic. I don't know how to describe it, but it has that fantasy old, it doesn't feel like necessarily like a new release. It has this oldness to it and this nostalgia to it that I'm getting while reading. However, I do think the world building is a bit info dumpy. And I had this issue with A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross, where I loved the writing in this one, but there were times when the world building was a little bit info dumpy. In fact, a lot info dumpy. It's the trophy. 
It just seems to be an issue she has. And it's not, it's not in a way that actually annoys me. She gets away with it. Like it's not, I'm not sitting there going, oh, this is so badly done, it's so annoying. I think if you're gonna do info dumpy, she has some of the best execution of it. But I would prefer if you didn't. But she, she does manage to like think of interesting ways to info dump. Like, oh, tell me this story or like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's introduced in interesting ways, but it is like two pages of like world building. And I'm not quite, like I'm even, <laughs> all this orbiting there's something about the magic system and the world and the gods and whatever that i'm like no scoop mate no scoop don't get it <laughs> So I don't know, I'm a bit torn on that front. But something that is interesting, right, is they're journalists, right? And they're they're both known for their great writing, how their words capture you and like, oh my gosh, their writing is so incredible. And like, it's an interesting point that the writing in the rest of the book, because you have excerpts of their writing, that the writing in the rest of the book, the normal book, kind of has to be average enough that their writing stands out. Because their writing is standing out. I'm like, wow, that's really good. But it kind of means that that's like at the sacrifice of the rest of the book. Like I could read a whole book in the writing style that Iris writes in, but I'm not getting to because her writing has to stand out from Rebecca Ross's writing, even though it's obviously Rebecca Ross's writing. I just think that's an interesting point and I think it has an interesting effect on the story, but I'm not hating it, but I'm not like, oh my God, this is the best book I've ever read. It's like a four star, I'm really enjoying it, but like all of the books in this video come with quite high expectations because they're your guys' favorite books of the year. I don't know, but I had stuff that I wanted to show you really quickly. Two things from Costa Rica that I read, I didn't show you in the Costa Rica vlog. If you haven't watched it yet, go check it out. It was like the trip of a lifetime. So one of the travelers, Chelsea, made everyone these little crochet octopuses. Can you see that? Is that focusing? Yeah, look at them. Hang on, I'm trying to show you both both at the same time. Look! And they have little tails. Oh my god, I love them. How cute are they? Um, it was so kind. She made one for everyone. This is mine and Tom's. That's <laughs> why so, yeah, I've got two. But how kind is that? So I will leave Chelsea's crochet Instagram down below, but I, I can't wait. I'm deciding what to put them on. Do I put them on my keychain? Do I put them on like my bag? Because I have some like little, little, I have an Eevee head on one of my bags. So I'm like, do I put it with that? But aren't they so cute? I love them. And then guys, you're going to scream. Erica, another one of the travellers bought me the US cover of How to Sell a Haunted House. <laughs> I'm so happy, it's the US cover. I hate the UK cover so much. I am so happy, I love it. It's so pretty, so now I can finally read How to Sell a Haunted House. I won't read it before the end of the year, as you know, because I'm just reading loads of mystery thrillers after I finish these fantasy books for this video. So, but how kind was that? So, they're both so kind. And I just felt, I felt so lucky. So yeah, anyways, I am gonna go put all these books away and cry whilst I do it. <laughs> and I will see you once I've finished Divine Rivals. Wish me luck. Guys, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to. I don't know how to approach this. Um, I really did not enjoy the second half of this. Uh, you guys go drag me for this, huh? Okay. I had no desire to pick it up. I had no desire to read it. This book took me far too long. It took me like three days, four days to read. I don't have that kind of time. I need to be reading a book a fucking day. <laughs> 
I was positive in my last check-in, right? Like, I'd say I give the first half of this a four star. I'd say I give the second half of this a two star. So overall, I'm gonna give it a three, but like my lasting feeling of it is one of boredom and annoyance. <gasps> Oh, <laughs> so unsubscribe everyone. I liked the journalistic setting of this, I think. The war setting felt very unpolished. It felt like, I was like, what the hell is going on? I have no clue. Do you know what I mean? It felt completely um, lacking. And the romance, it didn't work for me. <laughs> It didn't work for me. I didn't mind the characters individually, but girl, this is a, okay, no, I've really got to talk about this because it really pissed me off. This is a spoiler. I'm putting spoilers up on the screen. You can skip ahead to where it no longer says spoiler. Do you want spoilers? They get fucking married a day after professing their love for each other, basically, or like within a week. Married. She's like, he's my husband, girl. 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 And I get that it's like, this is set, you know, in kind of our equivalent of like 1940s, like World War II. Maybe that would be a bit more normal back then. But like, it just meant that I, I as a reader, felt like the romance was m moving at such a pace that I didn't feel like we'd established, right? Like, I, they were on, like, let's kiss and, you know, make out and like, they'd made out maybe once or twice and you're getting married. Absolutely not. It's just because they wanted to fuck. <laughs> Which does still happen, you know? Like, what's the Mormon university? And they're like, oh my God, everyone gets married within a week. So I guess it does still happen. But just as a reader, I felt like <laughs> the romance had not been established enough to get us to that point. Okay, spoilers over everyone. I've said what needed to be said, but that I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, my biggest feeling with this is actually, let me go get it, hang on. I believe I only gave A River Enchanted 3.5, so it's only half a star above this, right? But what I loved about this is it felt so unique. It didn't feel like it was following the patterns of every book on the market. It felt like it was doing something different. It felt like it wasn't just trying to be so marketable to the current like book landscape just playing into the tropes and the story beats that like TikTok loves right it was something different and it had this quietness and uniqueness to it this feels like the opposite for me it feels like listen I'm all here I'm here for Rebecca trying to get her coin but it feels like it's just trying to play into what TikTok loves at the moment what is going to get it to go viral what do you, do you know what I mean I felt like there was some artistic integrity <laughs> and uniqueness to this that really felt like it was lacking in this one for me especially more towards the end so I'm not going to be continuing on with the series I know it's only a duology but you know I really enjoyed the first half of this but the second half of this just really lacked for me anyway I have another book that I need to talk to you about let's go downstairs we break up the <laughs> scenery a bit because I need to talk to you a bit about our next book False alarm, Tom's cooking downstairs <laughs> and uh, it's noisy. So I am already a hundred pages into Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson and I'm loving it. Ah! <laughs> Guys, I'm obsessed. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. <gasps> oh my God, Jesus Christ. Check out the bless me. <laughs> So basically all you need to know about this is Tress has lived on her island for like all her life. She falls in love with this guy, Charlie, but then his father makes him move away. And Charlie's like, don't worry, I'm not gonna, he, like the father wants him to go marry a princess, right? And he's like, I'm not gonna marry anyone, Tress, don't worry, I'll keep sending you cups so you know I'm not marrying any of these princesses. And his father catches wind of it and punishes him and like makes him live with the source, the deadly sorceress, right? And then Tress is like, I'm gonna go save my man. I'm gonna go save my man. I love the way that this is written. This is very cozy fantasy. It's very like, it's got this dry, sarcastic sense of humor. It's got this omniscient narrator. No, not, not, not omniscient necessarily but kind of feels like it. it he is a character in the story but we don't know much about him but he's like telling Tress's story and I just love the tone that it's written in I've got the audiobook which is how I've gotten 100 pages in because I was like kind of reading this alongside that second half of Divine Rivals which I also think didn't help because I was loving this so much that I was like why do I have to keep reading Divine Rivals why I just want to read this <laughs> 
<laughs> so now I can just read this. I'm going to finish this in like today. I'm going to finish this by this afternoon. I just know it. And so yeah, it's got this very dry sense of humour to it. And I just think it's amazing. If you're looking for cosy fantasy, this would be where I'd go. If you're looking, I've read so much cosy fantasy after loving Legends and Lattes. And I just feel like so much is cosy fantasy and name only. And like, yes, there's a bit of death in this, but it's kind of like in a way where it's not gory and it's just to serve the plot. I don't know. There's a talking rat. There's a talking rat. There is a talking rat. What more do you want? It was a talking dog, you know what I mean? I love it. I love when the narrator breaks the fourth wall and talks to us directly as the reader. Oh, guys, it's so good. So she's on this ship now, and I'm just, I'm kind of, I want her to get off the ship soon. Like, I, I, I like the ship vibes, but let's get on to the next stage of the journey. The one thing I would like about this book is for it to, like, have a lot of stages to it. I said, I've never read any Cosmere. I've never read, um... Any cosmic, I can't think of the names of any of the books. But I've only read Brandon Sound and Cypher and I didn't love it. But this for me just feels like, and you can tell it's one of those secret, um, the secret projects that he had. And it feels like a passion project. It feels like a book written freely and with joy and with excitement. I don't know, I think with, with, with books, but also with like things like music or whatever, you can tell when an artist has like lost the love of it a bit and is doing it for commercial pressure and like I mean that happens to all of us we need to make coin do you know what I mean but I, I think there's something special about a book that's written free from constraints and is just written for fun and enjoyment and love of the art and that's what I feel like this book is so I'm obsessed you guys are gonna have to pry this away from my dead cold hands I'm just gonna keep listening to the audiobook the audiobook though I had to get it on Spotify I was like, I was struggling to read. I was like, okay, I need an audiobook. So I got it on Spotify, which like pained me a little bit because I had to pay for it. But yeah, it wasn't on Scribd, on Audible, any of my library services. My library have a pretty good selection now. So, alas. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to go read some more. I'll check in with you once I've read some more. But I am absolutely, I'm loving it. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. You guys, okay, you're going to redeem yourselves from whatever Divine Rivals was. <laughs> okay, I have gotten up to... Part five, so I'm on page like 190. I'm still loving it. <laughs> Guys, I think it's gonna be five stars. I think it's gonna be five stars. I think it's gonna be five stars. <gasps> oh my God. Am I about to have another five star in my hands? <laughs> Is today a good day? Today's a great day. It's a blessed day. Nope. I'm just loving the writing. We're still on the ship. I think maybe this whole book is really on this ship, but um, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. I'm enjoying the progression of the story. I just can't believe how much I'm loving this. I heard mixed things about these special uh, secret, whatever, projects from Brendan Sanderson. So let me know, is this just like the best one? Because everyone's loved this one. So is this like the one that's good and then the others aren't as great? Because I'm like tempted, I'm loving this, Oh! And like, I am so happy to be reading a fantasy that is a standalone. <laughs> Like, thank the Lord. <laughs> like, every fantasy I read is part of a series. Do you know what I mean? It's so hard to find fantasy that's a standalone. But, like, I'm kind of like, mm, I could take a series. <laughs> I could take a series. So, also let me know, does Brandon Sanderson have anything that's a similar tone to this in its coziness? Because, like, I'm liking the low stakes, low magic, you know, confined book. I'm also, I don't usually love piratey sea books, but I'm really enjoying that aspect of it as well. But, you know, the perception of his other books to me is like it's a very big fantasy and that's not necessarily what I'm looking for. But does he have any other books similar tonally to this? Because I'm intrigued. <laughs> I'd like to see that. I would like to see that. Anyways, I also just got a package from Amazon. I think it's from my Amazon wish list. Someone's got me something. So I thought I'd open it with you. Um, because this makes me so happy. I, I feel like I've been struggling through it a little bit this week. I've been struggling and this is exactly what I needed, like a little pick me up. So let's see, oh my God, there's two books. Okay, let me pull out one first. <gasps> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> this is uh, Shark Heart by Emily Habeck. This is nominated, so I did a live show with my patrons. I know who this is from, I think. I think this was from Cade, one of my patrons. But I did a live show where I reacted to the Goodreads Awards, like the nominees. And this one just sounded so amazing to me. It's about this couple who I think are artists, but Lewis finds out he has a rare diagnosis. He will retain most of his consciousness, memories and intellect, but his physical body will gradually turn into a great white shark. And I am just so intrigued. Oh, interesting. It's like a lot of really short chapters. <gasps> I'm so excited to read this. This 
definitely sounds like my kind of like, if it's gonna be fiction, it's at least weird fiction, you know? So I'm really, oh look, look at the short little line. <gasps> I'm very excited and everyone else on the live show seemed very intrigued by this as well. So, oh my goodness. And then what is the other book? There's some messages as well. Let me get the messages out. I'm getting the messages out. I'm not looking at what the other book is. Oh, don't. Okay, okay. This is from Cade. Cade says, you you helped bring back my love of reading and I'll always be grateful for that. Stop it. Stop it. You're going to make me cry. The other book is Monstrilio. Oh, I'm really excited for this one too. I know this has been a horror that everyone's been loving it. Um, that everyone's been loving it, that everyone's been loving. <laughs> um, I don't, I feel like a lot of horror, especially horror like this, I kind of want to go into it not knowing anything. So I'm going to be honest, I don't know much. In fact, I don't know anything, but I want to leave it like that. I just know that people have been loving it. I don't want to know the plot. I know it's a thing about like, it's a following a family and it's like maybe about grief and like, you know, I think it's saying stuff, but I've heard amazing things about this. <gasps> Thank you so much, Cade. What an incredible gift. Thank you so much oh my gosh i'm so excited oh beloved by anthony doa for shark heart thank you so much Kate. now guys something momentous i'm about to go and do i'm gonna go dye my hair <laughs> we're saying goodbye to the highlights and we're going fully dark like my roots i'm ready to go back to my roots i feel like we've had our fun i've had the highlights you know obviously i've had them redone but i've had them for like a year and a half now i want to say close to a year and a half and i'm ready i want like autumnal dark hair and I've just had my fun with it. I'm ready to go back dark. So I need to head out because I'm running late <laughs> for the hairdressers, but let's go. And you'll see my hair. This is my hair before. I mean, my roots are really grown out. I should have like, basically I wanted to keep the light hair for Costa Rica and there was no point like getting my highlights done again to then like re-dye it like a month after. So I just had them quite grown out. But anyways, let's um let's go dye my hair. Ah! I'm gonna keep listening to the audiobook of this in the car because I am loving it. It. I said I wanted my natural hair color. Oh my god, this is so crazy. I can't do this. <laughs> Who is she? Who is she? Where did you find her? I'm like looking at myself like who is that? <laughs> but I said I wanted my natural hair color with like a hint of red. Not red hair, just like a like a dash of warmth. And I feel like she did perfect. Guys. <laughs> I was looking at myself in the mirror as like we... <laughs> I was looking at myself in the mirror as like we washed the dye off and like dried the hair and I was like, oh my God, I'm me again. Like I feel, I had fun with the blonde, but I feel like I'm me again. I love it. I am so happy. I just can't stop looking at it. <laughs> I don't actually love myself this much. I just act like I do. Anyways, I have finished Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson and I'm giving it five stars. I loved this. I thought it was wonderful. The last part of this that I've read since I last spoke to you was just so good. There's some twists in this. <gasps> There's some twists <laughs> that I did not see coming. I loved the twist in this and I just loved the way that this was written. I loved, you know, it often has these kind of like nuggets of philosophical wisdom or like, do you know what? It, it reminds me of, it is cozy fantasy. I would class it as that. It's got that kind of whimsical storytelling. But I do think it has a good mix of light and dark, right? It has some more serious topics. It has some more serious moments that I do appreciate. I just loved it, guys. And I would be intrigued to know, obviously, like I said, I've never had any Brandon Sanderson other than Skyward before and some reviews I was reading said that this has a lot of easter eggs both in terms of characters and I think like storytelling elements of the Cosmere so I'd love to know what the what the easter eggs are I think maybe Hoyd is Hoyd like a character a well-known character as a Cosmere this makes me what if I I'm in my Brandon Sanderson era next year <laughs> I wonder if it's supposedly gonna be my classics era what if I'm suddenly in my Brandon Sanderson era as well 
<laughs> yeah, no, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Thank you guys for getting me through this book because I probably wouldn't have picked it up if it wasn't for this video. I loved the twist. I love the journey the book goes on. It's a perfect little standalone. I love the found family. There's a found family by the end of this group by the end of this book, sorry, in like the the crew of the ship. And I loved all of those characters and their relationship. I loved it. I loved it. Now we have to try and take on the behemoth that is The Will of the Many by James Edisington. I'm doing nothing other than I've got a GeoGuessr live show my patrons later today. It's like almost three o'clock. I am just reading this the rest of today. We're definitely gonna get at least 200 pages in, if not more, is the goal. And I'm gonna chat with you about every 200 pages because it's about 600 pages. So I'll see you once I've read about 200 pages. Like I said, I don't really know anything about this book. I don't know the plot, I don't know the vibe, I don't know anything. I've never read anything by James Islington either. Do you need to be this long? I guess we'll find that out. But I'm excited, I'm excited to get into this book. I'm very, very excited. Good morning, I have something to talk about. <laughs> I am, how many pages in am I? I am, 180, yeah, about 180 pages into The Will of the Many. So I'm essentially a third of the way through, bar 20 pages. And I have decided to soft DNF it. Yup, 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 yup. Now, let me explain myself. A vague synopsis of this book is that we've got a guy who I think used to be a prince on a nearby island that was, the monarchy was toppled. He was an orphan. He's hiding his true identity. He's saying he's just like a little orphan boy from the area. And he gets, dis certain powers he has gets discovered by a, it's like this whole magic system of like levels of power because like people give your will to the person above you. It's like a pyramid scheme. It's like the like fantasy MLM basically. <laughs> Like for MLM girlies into a fantasy. Imagine that. And so yeah, he gets discovered by one of the important guys and he's like, I'm gonna adopt you and you're gonna go into this academy, this elite academy, and you're gonna spy on everyone there for me. Okay, that's basically all you need to know. And this has been so highly rated. So many of you have been telling me, not just on like, tell me your favorite book post, but like when I did all the books on my TBR, I've had so many comments of people loving this. Like so many people have told me they've loved this. And I'm just not getting that right now. I'm not disliking it at the moment it's like probably like a three 3.5 but I'm not I I can't understand where you're coming from I can't even begin to like speculate what it is that you're loving about it it's just like an average fantasy <laughs> in my view and so I think some of that could just be down to it's not the right time so that's why it's a soft DNF it's gonna stay on my TBR I do still want to read this one day but it's not even like I've been rushing it right obviously I have a lot of books that I want to read but I've been taking my time with this I didn't want to rush it I have not been like I've read a lot of it whilst playing games on my phone which I often do with books like on a slow speed I listen to the book slowly especially when I'm starting a book out I like to do that at the start to kind of like ease me into the book and then when I've been reading it physically I haven't been reading it any faster than than usual so it's not like I've been like rushing through the book I am just I just don't get where you're coming from if you didn't, it wasn't something to be liked. It was something to be understood from an academic perspective. Well, they... Obviously, you're not an academic. No. I don't get it. The writing's fine. The plot's fine. But it is very slow. Like, I am 200 pages into this and nothing has happened, really. Or a few things, that's not fair. A few things have happened, but not much has happened. And when you think, like, that, some books are the length. Like, a novella is the length of what I've just read. And it's... <laughs> it's not doing as much as it could do in that time, right? It's a slower fantasy. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just not connected to it. I feel like maybe when you get to the the, the school, which I think is coming up, perhaps, but there's nothing unique about this to me. And there must be something unique for it to have only had 7,000 ratings, but to have gotten this list. I mean, the other books I've mentioned to you, the other books, Divine Rivals and Trust the Emerald Sea, have got like, over 70,000 ratings each, I believe. So they're much more likely, by having more readers, you have a higher chance of people saying it was their favorite book of the year. This has a 10th of that. So there must be something special about it in order for you all to be saying that. And I'm just not seeing what that is. So. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that there. Um, I do wanna pick this up again, but I'm not gonna pick it up anytime soon. I feel like when you've read 200 pages of the book, I'm gonna wanna reread that when I start the book for the first time. And I don't want it to have been so recent that I'm like feeling bored at reading that. So I'm gonna give it at least six months, if not a bit longer to 
read this again to pick this up again because I do want to give it a go because some of you have been loving it but I don't want to leave the vlog on that note I feel like that's a bit of a dull note to leave the vlog on so I'm gonna move to one of the books that six of you said was your favorite book of the year and I'm gonna read is it a psalm for the wild built by Becky Chambers the first in that duology yeah a psalm for the wild built it's on script both the ebook and the audiobook so I'm gonna pick that up it's only a short novella and I thought that would be a fun way to not let you down <laughs> Because otherwise it's a bit of a boring note. If this had been in the middle book of the vlog, that would have been fine. But it's a bit boring to end on the DNF. So I'm going to read another little book, A Psalm for the Wild Built. And I will see you once I have finished that. Because um, I don't think it will take me that long. It's only, the audiobook is only four hours for the whole book versus 28 hours <laughs> for this. So I'll see you when I finish that. But um, yeah, I apologise. But I just felt like I don't want to read this right now if it's not working for me right now. And I don't often do that. Usually I just push through, guys. You know that. But I just felt like in this case, I should. something was telling me I should stop and pick this up another time. And maybe I would have more success with it then. Okay, guys. I have finished Sound for the Wild Built. And... I've got to apologize again because I didn't love this as much as everyone else. I didn't dislike it. I'm going to give it a 3.5, okay? I'm giving it a 3.5, but I feel like that is still not what you're hoping from me. <laughs> Basically, all you need to know about this is that it's like a sci-fi, cozy sci-fi novella between this monk and this robot um, discovering stuff about humanity and what it means to be human. I don't really, with a novella, I never like to say a lot because I don't want to spoil it at all. And this is one of those cozy books that is also trying to say something. And it was making me think of examples I'd loved of this in cozy fantasy, like Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry or Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. And I always think with these, like, oh, I don't get how everyone doesn't love them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, how can you not give Legends of Lattes five stars? But there's plenty of people, like, my subscribers, I see you guys, like, oh my god, Megan, I gave it three stars, don't look at me, you know? But if you are not connecting to the message in this, for whatever reason, if it doesn't resonate with you, you're not going to give it five stars. And that's really what happened to me with this book, is that I, I understood the message it was trying to make, but it didn't resonate with me. It didn't have any emotional impact with me. And the message it's trying to make is something that I relate to, but just how it was presented and how it was said and what we were doing like it just I, it didn't cut to my core and that's what I need you to do if that's the kind of book that you're doing so I just didn't love it <laughs> I just didn't love it I don't think I'm gonna continue on the series but I'm glad that I've read it now because now I know you know what everyone's talking about it's fun to read like a novella that you've heard a lot of people talking about because it's like quick to tick off the list but also you get to kind of know what the deal has been but yeah <sighs> like the latter half of it I was like oh they're gonna drag me again <laughs> They're gonna be so mad at me. But listen, at least you did better than last year in that we got one five star. I absolutely loved Tress of the Emerald Sea. I cannot explain to you enough how much I loved it. And we got a five star, which we didn't manage last year. But it was super fun seeing what some of your favorite books of the year so far have been. Let me know if you didn't contribute to Instagram or that community post. Let me know what some of your best books of the year have been down below. If you got into the end of the video, comment in a green emoji in homage to Tress of the Emerald Sea. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye!